Uh, next presenter is Christine Crono. Uh, Christine uh, has written a few books on this and she's been passionately uh, following low carb, higher fat for a long time and it seems to be working for her. Um, and uh, she's, she's from Brisbane and has been, uh, been a great supporter for the things that we've been putting on over the last year or two. Thanks, Christine. All right, how is everyone? Now this is my favourite subject, saturated fat. Now most of us are pretty familiar with heart healthy guidelines. And that is basically, if it tastes good, spit it out. <laughs> they want us to reduce our fat, especially saturated fat, and many of you have probably been doing that for most of your lives. So you might find this topic slightly confronting, but hopefully maybe a little bit exciting. And others of you have probably heard now that saturated fat might be good for us, but you might be too nervous to try it. Or you might be wondering, well, how much is too much? And others of you might be sitting there in suspense at the idea of getting a free pass to eat butter and bacon again. So whatever you're thinking or feeling, I'll show you why you'll never need to diet again, why the low fat movement did not work, and why in fact, the vilification of fat has been the biggest health mistake in history. I'll also explain why eating more fat will actually help you lose weight and boost your health and vitality. How does that sound? Now just in case you're sitting there thinking or wondering if I've ever been on a diet in my life, this was me when I was 23. I started struggling with my weight around 18 and I tried all kinds of diets. I normally started that diet on a Monday. Anyone else do that? Now the Tuesday was always much easier and that's because by then my diet was well and truly over. <laughs> now, some of you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, she looks all right now, but wait till she has a couple of kids and hits that middle-aged spread. Now, I remember someone telling me that years ago, the middle-aged spread was unavoidable and would definitely hit me in my mid-30s. Well, this is me at 43, after my two beautiful children, one of whom just finished his first year at university. And I've been this weight for over a decade. I never think about how much I eat, I never count calories, and I never ever diet. In fact, I love to eat. And in fact, I eat all those forbidden foods, butter, bacon, eggs, whipped cream, the whole shebang. In fact, some of you would be quite shocked at just how indulgent I am with food. Once my husband saw my breakfast plate and said, wow, that looks like a truckie's breakfast. And that's because it looks something like this. Now, I love what I do because it's making a profound difference in people's lives. I receive daily success stories, and not just about weight loss, but all kinds of improved health conditions. Everything from acne, Alzheimer's, to Hashimoto's. And in the 10 years that I've studied health and nutrition, I've discovered that the majority of the health messages we receive on a daily basis are incorrect. And that's why I feel obligated to share what I know. So how did we get this so wrong? I'm going to show you a fun little clip from the brilliant documentary Fathead, which explains it beautifully. If you could pack all of human history into one year, we've only been farming and eating grain since about yesterday, which is when we became shorter and fatter. We only started consuming processed vegetable oils about 10 minutes ago, which is when heart disease became our number one killer. So after examining all this human history, the experts came to the obvious conclusion. We need to eat a lot more of these. And so they convinced us that human health depends on foods we didn't eat for more than 99% of our entire existence. How did this happen? In the 1950s, a biochemist named Ansel Keys published a study that compared heart disease and fat consumption in a half dozen countries. The more fat, the more heart disease. The trend line was unmistakable. Just one little problem. Keys left out countries where people eat a lot of fat but have very little heart disease, like Holland and Norway. He also left out countries where people don't eat much fat but do have a lot of heart disease, like Chile. 
In fact, Keyes had reliable data from 22 countries, and the results were all over the place. But you can't make a big splash in the scientific community with a trend line that looks like this. So Keyes did what any dedicated researcher would do. He threw out the data that didn't fit and published his results. His punishment for this bit of scientific chicanery was to get his picture on the cover of Time magazine. Keyes became known as the father of the lipid hypothesis, which says that eating saturated fat raises the cholesterol in your blood, and high cholesterol in your blood clogs your arteries and causes heart disease. Now, did anyone notice it was called a hypothesis? And it's still called that today. It was simply an idea that was never proven, and in fact, hundreds of studies have now shown absolutely no correlation between saturated fat intake and heart disease. Now, what few people know is we've been eating saturated fat for millions of years, two and a half million years, without heart disease and without obesity. Does anyone know? Oh, actually, it's up there. It shouldn't be up there yet. <laughs> Around the 1900s is when we started to see those diseases. So a lot of skeptics love to say, but when we were hunter-gatherers, we didn't live very long. But that's not actually the case. The science shows us that we actually, if we avoided the natural elements like saber-toothed tigers, we lived a very long time. And in fact, our longevity shortened once we started eating grains and other modern foods. And we also got shorter and fatter. And the more the food changes, the more we change. And it's, just, it's not just our health that's declining. Our physical attributes are changing as well. So have a look at these African children with these beautiful straight teeth and wide faces. When we changed our diet, our jaws started to narrow and other malformations are extremely common. You start to see children with eyes too close together, large protruding foreheads, lopsided ears, overbites, underbites. I know it seems shocking, but this is simply a case of malnutrition. So we've been healthy and robust for millions of years, so what happened in the 1900s especially to change that? It's been blamed on saturated fat. So did we suddenly start eating more? We didn't. In fact, saturated fats come right down, but we did start producing sugar, vegetable oil, margarine. In fact, between 1890 and 1920, sugar consumption doubled. And by 1926, we had our very first documented case of heart attack. And by the 1950s, heart disease was extremely common. And experts were scrambling for a solution. Unfortunately, they picked the wrong one. So what's the truth about saturated fat? Well, fat, saturated fat actually can't make us fat. It's physiologically impossible. Now, some foods prompt our body to store fat, and some don't. That's why it's meaningless to count calories. We all know fat has more calories than just about anything else. But it doesn't act the same way in the body. So what does make us fat? When we eat sugar and carbohydrates, it's converted to glucose. And then, of course, we produce insulin which helps us get that glucose to where we need it, like our brain or our muscles. Now, the important thing to note is that we can only use or store a very small amount at any one time, which means if we eat extra, then we have to store the rest as fat. Now, is this a bad process? Absolutely not. In fact, it was essential in times of famine. But the problem is, these days, we have access to way too many carbohydrates. So we're doing this. And of course, that means we're storing more and more fat. Eventually, the body gets sick of this entire process, becomes insulin resistant, and stops producing insulin. Then we have type 2 diabetes. And as an interesting side point, what happens when we can no longer get that glucose to our brain? Then we have Alzheimer's. That's why they call it type 3 diabetes. And basically, no matter what you hear in the media, that disease is completely preventable, as are most other modern diseases. 
Does anyone know how we fatten our livestock? Yeah, not with fatty foods, is it? Low fat grains, and this is the reason why. So saturated fat doesn't make us fat, but what about heart disease? Now experts insist on a direct link between saturated fat intake and heart disease. But as our saturated fat consumption comes down, heart disease continues to go up. So what's the real cause? Well, experts have been surprised to find that this build-up in our veins is not actually saturated fat. Does anyone know what it is predominantly? It's polyunsaturated fat. So all those heart-healthy vegetable oils build up in our arteries. Also, study after study shows that sugar increases risk for heart disease in a number of ways. Number one, too much sugar causes inflammation. That builds up in our arteries as well. Also, when we get that glucose trapped in our bloodstream, we then, it actually changes the consistency of our blood. And that actually irritates our blood vessels. So we start getting these little scabs. And those scabs get irritated. Doesn't seem so bad, but you can kind of see what's happening, right? Eventually you have that. This process is called acute thrombosis. And it's why many diabetics have limbs removed because their blood vessels are so damaged. It's also why most diabetics will actually die from heart disease. And what do our health experts keep telling us to do? Have low fat products full of sugar. So saturated fat doesn't make us fat, doesn't cause heart disease, but is it bad for us to go on a low fat diet? And the answer is yes. And that's because fat and cholesterol are absolutely essential for many reasons. But here are just a few of them. So we need fat and cholesterol for our cells. In fact, our cell membrane is 50% saturated fat. So imagine telling someone to try and eliminate saturated fat from their diet when their cell membranes, which are the building blocks of the body, consist of saturated fat. Now, this to me is the most important thing. Cholesterol is our healing mechanism. So if we've got really high glucose levels, our cholesterol levels will probably come up because it's trying to heal the inflammation. So if we take that cholesterol away, we've pretty much taken away the only protection we did have from developing heart disease. How ironic is that? Now we need fat and cholesterol for our organs, including our lungs. We need fat and cholesterol for good energy, which is why fatigue is such an issue these days. We need fat and cholesterol for our sex hormones, including testosterone, progesterone, everything. We need fat and cholesterol for our emotional health. Serotonin is a hormone that's based on cholesterol. So if you look at these few things here, you can see how related they are. Is it any wonder that many people struggle with sex drive these days? They're fatigued, they've got zero sex hormones, and they don't feel good. By the way, why is it, do you think, that more women tend to get fatigued than men? Someone normally calls out, we work harder. <laughs> it's actually because we listen. We try to do the right thing. We try and follow health advice. So men tend to do whatever they want, and that actually helps them out immensely in this area. Unfortunately, the doctor often gets them later on with cholesterol medication. So we also need fat and cholesterol for our reproduction, which is why fertility is such an issue these days. And also, if we don't get enough fat and cholesterol, we actually age, we get old before our time. Now there are three reasons why we're aging faster now than we ever have before in history. Number one, we need that fat and cholesterol for those cell membranes to keep our cells hydrated. If we don't have it, we start to shrivel like prunes. Number two, that polyunsaturated fat damages the cell membrane which causes wrinkles. And number three, sugar is the number one ager. It destroys our collagen. 
So we've pretty much got a triple whammy of premature ageing with our modern Western diet. In addition, if we lower our cholesterol with a drug, we've increased our risk for muscle damage, brain damage, impotency, cancer, and ironically, we've increased our risk for heart disease. So these drugs are associated with triple the risk of calcification of the arteries. And also, low cholesterol itself increases our risk for premature death. And this is a fact that's never been contradicted in any scientific study or paper. So why does no one know about it? Because cholesterol medication is the biggest selling prescription medication in the world. So, hopefully we've established that fat and cholesterol are good for us. But can we have too much of it? What do you guys think? Just shout it out. Oh, I like the front row here. <laughs> Surprisingly, the answer is no. Now, primal societies thrived on extremely high fat diets. The Inuit ate around 80% of their calories as fat and they were robust and healthy, no sign of modern chronic disease. In addition, it's pretty much impossible to overeat fat, and that's because it produces our fullness hormone. It's, we have a problem when we take it away, when we take the fat away, that's when we can eat and eat and eat and eat. It's a completely different story with fats. You can try it yourself, do a little experiment at home, get a nice juicy pork roast for dinner. Now, most people, you know, the thick piece of fat under the crackling. How many of you would cut that off normally? Oh, I like this crowd. <laughs> yeah, leave it all on, eat the crackling. If you had plans for dessert, you'll quickly change your mind. Now, I can understand some people might still have reservations, so this might make you feel better. In addition to other fats, our family eats over two kilos of butter every single week. And if you think we're exercising it off, it's not even about the exercise. Now, Tara is a great example of this. She always loved to exercise, but the results of that exercise didn't show until she changed her diet. And that's because if we're prompting our body to store fat with the wrong foods, no amount of exercise is going to help us. And that's why if you walk into any gym in any part of the country, you see the same people doing the same thing week after week and their weight's not shifting. In addition, if we do too much exercise or the wrong type of exercise, we can actually prompt our body to store fat because we're producing too much stress hormone. So how are we doing? Still breathing? So in summary, saturated fat does not make us fat. It certainly does not cause heart disease. And it's actually sugar and vegetable oils that are the true culprits behind both of those things. Now, I know sometimes it's easier just to eat whatever we want, even if it does make us sluggish and heavier than we'd like. But at what cost? Most of us plan our financial retirement, but we forget to plan our health. So invest the time in your health today and you can save a measurable amount of time later in life when others of a similar age are struggling with illness and disease. And if you can do that, eating butter, bacon, eggs, crispy duck, pork crackling and whipped cream, why wouldn't you want to join the fat revolution? And chocolate. And chocolate. Yes, I make my own chocolate, so yes. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy it. <laughs>